the best views always up at 400 feet and it looks like the area hawks have figured that one out too. It is a quiet Friday afternoon across the U.S. We've got that 1034 millibar high in Michigan and Wisconsin and we've talked about how that's going to be driving cold air southward. Those temperatures in the 50s all the way from Atlanta to Dallas. There's not return flow in place just yet. However, the winds are starting to shift around to the southeast in West Texas. And we should start seeing the formation of a dry line in the next 24 to 36 hours in that area. In the western U.S., we have a Pacific front moving through Nevada. And you can see the westerly component to the wind flow in central California. And then up north, lee side troughing in Alberta with a bear clinic system coming together in that region. However, good plume of warm air with 50s temperatures all the way up into northern Manitoba. A quick look at the dynamics shows a progressive pattern with the waves leaning towards the short wavelength side. So the major troughs, one on the west coast, another right on the east coast, and that puts the central U.S. under ridging. So we're going to have a quiet, mild weather pattern this weekend. Just to see what's in store over the next week, let's move this forward. Yep, the patterns are absolutely progressing. Ridge shifting east, trough shifting onto the west coast, into the Rockies by Sunday and that's going to bring some of the stronger flow into the southwestern U.S., starting with the central states and then shifting down into Texas, where we're going to expect a thunderstorm outbreak on Monday afternoon. And since things are progressive, things are going to shift overnight into the Mississippi River Valley, and then for max heating on Tuesday, much of the energy should be up there in the Midwest. Here comes round two. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to recharge the air mass in time for this system. However, it looks like it does dig in on West Texas and doesn't come out into the state until Wednesday night. Big old cutoff low out there in the Pacific, and this is actually the time of year where Hawaii is subject to Kona lows. So this could be a pattern shaping up for them. Kona lows tend to be kind of stormy, and they bring a lot of rain to that island over many days. Pretty strong jet feeding into the western U.S., and we'll get a series of waves moving across the central and eastern states to close out the month of March. Now, this time of year, we have to be very alert to what precipitable water is doing. This represents the tropical air mass, and if the values get quite high, that's suggestive of MCS activity and flooding rains. So going into the weekend, we're going to develop that return flow in the Rio Grande. Looks like it doesn't really start advecting north until the day on Sunday. And you can see some paltry half-inch amounts making their way up into western Oklahoma. We're starting to see cyclogenesis take hold there overnight, Sunday into Monday, and that's when we're expecting the severe weather. We're getting one-inch amounts flowing up into the Dallas area early on Monday. And then towards the end of the day, those amounts build up to about one and a half inches. And now you can see a well-developed cyclone moving out into the central plains through Kansas towards Illinois during the day on Tuesday. So with that, we'll get a, another shot of drying coming in. You can see the moisture trying to build back in advance of that next trough. And it looks like since that trough is stalling out there for about a day or two, by the time it comes out on Thursday, we should have some decent moisture in place in Texas. But once that lifts northeast, that's going to carry a lot of the moisture with it, and we may see a severe weather outbreak in the southeast U.S. Thursday evening. And then that should shift up into the northeast U.S. as a typical springtime surface low. 
The next system in Texas looks kind of dry, and then getting towards the very end of the month, more return flow, and looks like another chance for thunderstorms around the 31st and 1st. So how are things looking for that severe weather outbreak on Monday? I figure we should look at the European model. And at the start of Monday morning, things will be looking like this. Cold front shifting south, Bear Clinic low around Plainview. And then the frontal structures looking a bit like that with a dry line out there around Hobbs and Pecos with triple point right there. So what happens during the day? Let's just bring this up to evening. You can see that dry line shifting rapidly to the east. This actually may be partly a cold front. If there's a Pacific system in behind that, we don't know just looking at this chart, but we can definitely make out the Canadian front right there with the slightly higher moisture north of that boundary. So this has all the appearances of a severe weather outbreak. Triple point right there around Wichita and Bowie. And we're starting to see 60s dew points making their way north. Looks like the moisture will be a, a bit on the weak side. Don't have soundings from the European model, but let's switch over to the GFS. So comparing the patterns, this is what we have at 12Z. Very similar, maybe just slightly out ahead of the European position. And the moisture does still look scarce on the GFS. Towards the end of the day, very similar progression to the European model, triple point between Wichita Falls and Fort Worth, and still looking at mid-50s dew points. So let's bring up a sounding for Dallas. So this is going to be Monday late afternoon into early evening. And yeah, lots of 50s dew points. So I expect that any storms that do get going will tend to be a little bit outflowish. Certainly a cap there. In fact, the cap could be a little bit too strong. You can see those convective inhibition values there, but some good lapse rates in the mid-levels. And the sounding, yeah, that's going to be supportive of supercells. So a few positive aspects and a few problems. And then we'll see how preset breaks out. There's the situation early Monday, some warm air advection stuff up there in northwest Oklahoma. Then the day goes on, and then we get the surface heating. And then by 21Z, yep, storms forming along the dry line. Now I think there could be a cold front back in here, so I'm not sure whether this is dry line or cold front driven. But those should advance eastward, and you can see the model going for some scattered to broken storms anywhere from Oklahoma City down to Stephenville and even down to San Antonio. And comparing that with the European model, some aggressive elevated warm air advection stuff early in the day that moves to the northeast. And then we get the deep convective stuff forming and the European model going a little bit further east with that. So it does look like Monday will be a busy day across much of North Texas and Oklahoma. So the plan for Monday is a, around noon, we're going to do a special severe weather workup. Now with it being Monday, that's going to be a supporter only video day. So if you want to get in on that, here's the address. Sign up on Patreon and you'll get the complete workup for Monday's severe weather outbreak. Otherwise, we will see everybody on Tuesday, and I hope you all have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.